Sometimes the best advice and devotion are the ones that aren't so much about everyone else, but sometimes it's about you. You know, you work in the ministry and you often see lots of things that are out there in the world. You see people falling apart, people failing, people stumbling, people fumbling. People making mistakes and errors in theology or relationship with the Lord and you, you kind of get burdened down at times, you know, you, you have a heart that wants to reach out and do more to make, like Keith Green used to say, a highway to the sky. You think that, boy, I got this one here messed up. You think that you're the one, you know, that God wants to use and you're going to somehow build a skyscraper and elevator for everyone to come to heaven and discover who Jesus is. The bottom line is the reality of what God wants is sometimes some people aren't going to be saved. You know, they have to let it go and leave it alone and walk away and step back. Sometimes in the holidays, you know, you have to do the same thing. You have to Slow down, back up, stop what you're doing. Rest, be still. You know, I mentioned it a lot in this holiday season, how you know, God wants to invade our anxieties and our anxiousness, but sometimes God just wants us to be healed and helped. Sometimes God just wants us to be still. Silent night, holy night, is not a night about constant activity like we do lots of times on maybe Christmas Eve or, or even on Hanukkah. But really, if you're too anxious, if you're too active, if you're pushing yourself beyond your limits, you're going too far. Sometimes too much is too much. So today's devotion really isn't only about you, but it's about me. It's about my life sometimes how I tend to get carried away about what I want to do and what I want to say. I get so excited that I run right out and I want to share what Jesus is doing and speaking to me. I hear something, I go, oh, cool. So then I jump up and I run to the internet and I post all these news stories, you know, to do my, my news service that I've, I've coveted with God to agree to do, you know, to provide information for people that are studying and wanting to know what's going on in the world. Then I run to my devotionals and post them and hurry up and get them started. You know, I kind of get wound up on the excitement and joy of serving the Lord. Sometimes God just says, hey, you know what? How about you serve yourself? Because there is a time for deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. If you go and you do, you follow him and and as you get along the way, sometimes God says, hey, put it down. Lay your cross down. Set aside those moments that are special, you know, for yourself. Take the time and make the time, sometimes, just for yourself, so that you could be alone with God and alone with your own thoughts. Because sometimes you need to think through the things you're doing. You need to spend that quality time rather than quantity time. And I know for myself, I like to flood the internet with just quality material. I like to say, oh, well, I, I know all this stuff, you know, let's just get it all out from all these different sources that God has provided on the internet. You know, people only can read so much in a day. 
sometimes there's an overwhelming of the goodness of God. And God wants to, like, you know, wait until people are hungry and thirsty for it. So, in that respect, I think God is talking to me when he wrote this devotion. And I think today I might spend some time, you know, maybe packing off some of the things I'm doing. Come apart to stay together. And the effect of righteousness will be peace, internal and external. And the result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust forever. Isaiah 32, 17. If you're feeling compelled to do so much that you're physically worn out, you may be driven instead of led. Remember, you have to come apart from a busy routine before you come apart yourself. You have to get away from everything before you come apart physically, mentally, and emotionally. Give yourself time to get a good night's sleep. It is tempting to do everything that everybody else is doing, be involved in everything, know everything, hear everything, and be everywhere. But it isn't God's best for you. Be willing to separate yourself from compulsive activity before you come apart at the seams. Spend time with God and ask Him to give order to your day. I know for myself I've been all wound up about hurrying up to get 2012 off to a start because I've been wanting to develop the devotionals to such a way that you know, we get all these done so that that way you don't have to re-record those in 2012. You know, it's just like, well, then there's plenty of material you know, to pull from. And sometimes providing that wealth of material requires a lot of effort. You know, you have to take the time to record, to edit, to provide, to coordinate all those things together so that they work out to be daily provision, you know, for each and every day of the year, you know, 365 days a year. You, you have all these goals. And as you coordinate your planning, you know, as you plan out your day, you have to have that time set aside in order for God to inspire you and to bless you with the ability to do those things. So in order to do that, sometimes he pulls you back. And he says, hey, I'm the shepherd, you're the sheep. <laughs> Relax, take it easy, step back. There are things that can be done, and there are things that can't be done, and there are things that shouldn't be done, and there are things that could be done. Personally, myself, if I had my way, I would be up 24-7. In the old days, I used to do that, and lately, I'll admit, I'm, being, I'm wearing myself down. You know, I've been getting more and more tired, and I slept probably twice as much last night as I think I ever have. And this is my time of year that really I should be hibernating, and I seem to be hyperventilating. <laughs> and so in that respect, today I think God is showing me, and maybe you, to... Don't get your list so long that you insist on doing something. Maybe take a day to step back, to sit back, take a deep breath of cold air. <laughs> or it's over where I'm at. Take a long, hot bath, which is what I'm about to do, and just enjoy what it is God's given you today. And then if he does tell you to do something, then do it slowly, carefully, patiently. Like he said, you don't have to do everything. You just have to do one thing, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, to behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord. I've always only wanted that, and I used to sit for hours in the sanctuary by myself, just silent, most of the time, quiet meditation. And that is one of the lost arts in the world today, is the quietness, the meekness, the gentleness, the sensitivity, the tenderness, the being still, without having to say a word before God. Maybe today, if you find yourself like me, so busy that you become tired, let's stop for a moment, you and I, 
anyone else's in this same word of God that he's given us. Let's take the time to not do something today. Take something out of your list and stop doing it for today. Take something, maybe, maybe you've got a list as long as mine, you'll take a bunch of things and cut them off your list for a while. <laughs> so that you'll have more time to recover and to restore and to return. Not to the Lord, because maybe your mind is always on you, but to return to walking rather than running with the race that's set before you. Sometimes God even tells you to stop and be still and not get ahead of I think maybe today might be a good day to say, okay, Lord, I hear you. I'm, I'm listening. I'm stopping. I'm going to take a hot bath, relax, <laughs> and enjoy myself. So God bless you today. I hope you do take the time to walk in a park, smell the roses. Don't miss the walking on the sidewalk and looking in window shopping without shopping. So just enjoy the time of the year that it is. God bless you.